So if we're given these two data sets and you were asked to, to describe the difference between the two data sets, you might want to look at such things as mean. And so first of all, we see that we have a mean of six on this quiz. And on this, mean, uh, this quiz, we have a mean of six as well. So they have identical means. The number of students that took the quiz, um, we have here a total of uh, 16 marks and over here we have a total of 16 marks. So the difference between them, you'll notice that the low mark here is 4 and the high mark is 8, whereas the low mark here is 5 and the high mark here is 7. And so we're going to come back to a definition that we gave previously and that is deviation. And deviation is the amount by which a single measurement differs from the mean. So if we're going to take a look at describing these, well, this one has greater deviation and this graph has lower deviation because the individual values here differ low, um, less between the mean. There's a the lower um, difference between 5 and 6 than there is between 4 and 6. So the deviation here for 4 would be 4 minus 6, which is negative 2, whereas over here the low deviation is 5 minus 6, which is negative 1. Now, I'm going to give a definition, and we're moving into a term called standard deviation, which you're probably familiar with. Um, if you were to take all the deviations, so all the differences between a value and the mean, for an entire set of data and square each of these deviations, then add them up and find the average, you would have what's called variance. And the square root of the variance is called the standard deviation. And we're gonna use a couple of Greek letters, um, sigma, and we're also gonna use S to indicate variance or standard deviation. Now. Standard deviation for a group data is ungroup, sorry, ungrouped data will be sigma or standard deviation is equal to the square root. Now remember the variance is um, when you when you add up all of the deviations and square them and then find the average, which would be dividing by the number of, um, in this case, if it's a population, the number of data values in that population. And then you take the square root to find the standard deviation. Similarly here, if you have a sample, you're gonna take each individual uh, value in that sample, subtract the mean, square it, and then add those, all those up, which is the sum notation, then we're gonna divide by n minus one. And the reason for that is we're gonna end up with a greater standard deviation for a sample than a population. And that uh, should be inherently obvious that you want that because if you take a sample because of um, random sampling error, even if you take the best sample uh, possible, there is going to be sampling error. So this then, um, allows for creating the, a higher standard deviation so that this data is better accepted. And we'll cover that later. Now, here again, so the standard deviation is equal to, now this is if you add up all of the values, subtract the mean, and then you square that, add those all up, divide by, in, if in the case of a population, um, n in the case in the case of a sample n minus one, and then take the square root of that value. That is a standard deviation. So now, in a sense, the standard deviation averages the square of the distance that each piece of data is from the mean. So you take an average of all how far the square is of each. Um, value of, of, of data in the sample set is from the mean. And if most data is clustered about the mean, 
then there is little dispersion and the standard deviation will be small. So going back to the graph that we were looking at before, here we have lower deviation and you'll notice that the data is clustered about the mean. So that means we're going to have lower variance, lower standard deviation. Similarly, if data is widely scattered, the standard deviation will be larger. Uh, the smaller the standard deviation, the more compact the data set. So going back over here, this, this, um, this data set will have greater standard deviation because the data is more spread out from the mean. So now if we ask the question, uh, Felix and Melanie are laying down patio stones. They record how many stones they put in in place each hour. So Felix, first hour puts in 34, then second hour 41 and so forth. Now the question is, first off, which worker gets more done during the day? And so if you total up the number of stones that Felix puts down each day, Felix manages to place 236 stones. Okay, if you add up all of these, and Melanie manages to put down 246 stones. And if we calculate the average, so if we want to know what the average, and we could actually count, calculate this as, we could say that this is a sample. So we're going to calculate the average or the mean of this data for Felix. His average is going to be 236 divided by 6. And that will work out to be uh, 39 decimal 3 repeating. So he puts down 39 and a third patio stones each hour. Now that's for Felix. And for Melanie, the average um, number of stones that she puts down each hour will be equal to 246 divided by 6, which is 41 stones per hour. So now, if we take a look at this, we now the question is, which worker is more consistent? And if you look at the data here, you can actually start to see, well, the range from lowest to highest for Felix is 24 up to 45, whereas Melanie has a low of 28 and a high of 51. And so her data is quite spread out from the 41. She's got one value that's at 41. So now the way we figure out which one is more um, consistent is we're gonna fill in this table and this will be our data value minus the mean. So in this case, it's going to be 34 minus 39.3 repeating. And what we're going to do over here is take that, so the 34 minus 39.3 repeating, and we're going to square that. So what I want you to do is complete this table for the number of, uh, uh, for Felix, and I want you to also complete the table for Melanie and compare your answers to what I have after in the next video. Okay, so you're gonna subtract each data value from the mean, and then you're going to square that. And in the end, what we're gonna do is use this in order to calculate the standard deviation of each worker.